After 5 years, 325 videos, and 123 stories you never knew, we're finally ready. Finally ready to go there. Finally ready for that jelly. That jelly which bounces back and forth to the dope beat of 3 generations of video game players, over 21 consoles and arcade cabinets, and even some goddamn pachinko machines. But most importantly, you are ready for that jelly. You see, when we make these videos, we want you to see them. And because of a certain dirty, nasty, awful game company that will go unnamed. We haven't realistically been able to dump this junk in our trunk onto the awaiting laps of beautiful viewers like your mom. But now is the time! Thanks to the beautiful and talented scholar and gentleman Masahiro Sakurai and the upcoming Super Smash Bros. Ultimate and their latest update, Castlevania is al almost relevant again. Who cares? The time is nigh, my little tree babies. Time for Simon Belmont, the greatest and most well-known of the Belmont clan. Protagonists of the legendary series Castlevania. So prepare your mom's lap for our trunk junk. Close your eyes and open your mind, for today we delve into the lore and into the more. Into a tale of a man who looks like that guy who works at that BDSM gay bar in the red light district I always have to drag my dad out of on Friday nights. Don't worry dad, mom still doesn't know. Onward we go to a family history riddled in manipulation, loss, and false glory. This is the story story of a legendary man who gave up everything to defeat the evilest of evil long before vampires turned into sparkly middle-aged women's wet dreams. Oh. Before whips and chains were a way to sell a novel with below average writing. <gasps> this is the story of a supposedly benevolent organization that molded evil into being and blamed the heroes who seeked to stop it. This is the story of Simon Belmont. The story. You never knew. Simon Belmont is the protagonist of the original Castlevania for the Super Famicom in 1986. In order to understand him, we must first understand what makes him who he is. That's comprised of three things, his family, his whip, and his enemy. And maybe the church. Ah, times were simpler in 1691. You didn't need much besides a whip blessed by the bane of evil and a body like Arnold Schwarzenegger circa his Mr. Galaxy days to get stuff did. But I digress. By the time Simon popped out of his mommy's no-no spot, his family was already world famous for being vampire killers, thanks to his ancestor Trevor who was the first to stick it to Dracula way back in 1591. Simon spent his childhood whipping it, whipping it good, and also wondering if he too could be cool like Trevor. But then, on Easter 1691, Dracula came back. Cause he always comes back, he's like the world's slowest and worst period, once every hundred years, but this time it was Simon who was the extra thick tampon we needed. And what better day to have an evil zombie bent on world destruction come back from the dead than Easter, am I right? Will this symbolism be important for a point I'm gonna make later on? I don't know. Simon entered Dracula's castle alone to stop the spread of monsters and evil bad stuff from Hot Cheeto's place with his family whip, the aptly yet slightly on the nose named Vampire Killer. On his way to the throne room, Simon took the time out of his day to brutally murder all of Dracula's friends, including the Medusa, Frankenstein's monster, and even death. Upon reaching Dracula, Simon defeated him thanks to his whip and clearly overactive thyroid. However, he got hurt pretty bad and was left to deal with it on his own. Yes, his holy health insurance didn't come through after his call of duty was over. There was a clause, he should have read his paperwork. In Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, bad game, this vampire boo-boo turns out to be an issue because it gave Simon vampire aids. Or a cursor or something. Simon thought he was going to die, but then some chick was like, No, you have vampire aids and you have to find all of Dracula's parts that are hanging out in some people's mansions or something and then burn them. So Simon did that and it was really annoying. All the people in town were stupid and then he had to crouch by this wall even though no one told him to. So Simon got the Dracula parts, but surprise, there was one more. That chick was a pretty little liar and told him about five, but there were really six. And then Dracula came back instead of dying. So Simon killed him again, burned his body, and buried him. And that's it. Except it's not! 
For characters to converge, there must be reasons. The story of Castlevania spans hundreds of years over a seemingly never-ending blood feud between the Belmont clan and Dracula, along with his army of evil. This was all during a time of Holy Crusade, commonly called genocide and race war, but it was in God's name, so it was fine. But why this never-ending battle between a family and a spoopy doopy vampire? Well, the answer to that question will reveal the true evil in this epic and the answer to Simon's motivation. The Belmont clan was once of noble blood. The first named Belmont was Leon, a holy knight and a baron born in 1072. Also, he was the main protagonist of Castlevania Lament of Innocence for that PS2. Leon was a gifted warrior and badass, just like Simon. He dedicated his entire life to the church and their eradication of undesirables. But when his love, Sarah, was taken from him by a vampire, he was forced to renounce all titles in order to save her. Upon entering the vampire's castle, he was given a whip imbued with alchemical properties by a man named Gandalfi who lived on the grounds. However, when it came to fighting Walter the Vampire, it was useless. So instead, Leon stole his wifey away from Vampire Walter and went back to Gandalfi, most likely to cash in his whip warranty. However, Sarah was bitten by Walter and was on her way to becoming a vampire too. Then Gandalfi was like, if you kill Sarah and bind her soul to the whip, it'll probably work a lot better, which was super convenient because she was technically dying anyway. Sarah said it was cool, Leon killed her, everyone is sad, boom, vampire killer whip. Leon then uses the whip to kick Walter's ass and vows that his family will fight evil forever. He still wasn't given his land or titles back, but hey, that, that's the way the communion cracker crumbles, dog. 400 years later in Wallachia, monsters started appearing everywhere, supposedly led by a count named Dracula. The Eastern Orthodox Church was all like, oh no, this looks bad for us, better send in the God SWAT team. But it didn't work. When all hope was lost, they turned to one man, Trevor Belmont. Because of Leon's choice to renounce all titles and his victory over Vampire Walter, the Belmont clan had been more or less exiled and feared because of their power. Trevor had grown up an outcast, like the rest of his family for hundreds of years. However, he, along with a fighter turned demon, a witch, and Dracula's own son, took down Dracula for the first time with the help of the Vampire Killer Whip in Castlevania III Dracula's Curse. This re-cemented the Belmonts as a revered and honored family, for a time at least. Then there was Christopher Belmont, star of the OG Game Boy Castlevania games, who, you know, killed Dracula again a hundred years after Trevor or whatever. It really wasn't anything special, so let's move on. We haven't even talked about Dracula yet! Well, while there was always monsters to fight, as seen with Leon and Vampire Walter, Dracula, and to a degree his castle, are an outlier, as they always come back every 100 years. But why does this happen? Who is Dracula, and what made him so upsetty spaghetti? Dracula was actually Leon Belmont's best friend, a man named Matthias whose wife died sometime before Leon Sarah was taken by Vampire Walter. He was a secret alchemist and a profound warrior guy, as well as a holy knight alongside of Leon. When Matthias's wife died, he cursed God for taking everything from him when he had given everything to the church his whole life. He vowed to become immortal so he could call God a butthead forever. The events in Leon's story, Lament of Innocence, were carefully calculated by Matthias. After Vampire Walter's defeat at Leon's hands, death reaped his soul, transferring it into the Crimson Stone which Matthias had acquired at some point. This in turn turned Matthias into the most most powerful vampire ever, or something. Sensing a new threat, the Vampire Hunter Whip reacted, alerting Leon to Matthias's change. The blade glows blue when vampires are close. The vow by Leon Belmont to forever fight evil was a vow against Matthias directly, due to their broken friendship and betrayal. You know, using your best bud soul to become immortal is a pretty dick move. Also, like, being a vampire is pretty unholy and shit. So I'm sure the bureaucrats over at the ye olde popple house wouldn't have appreciated them remaining on good terms anyway. Matthias stole away to another land where he eventually met a woman named Lisa. The two fell in love and had a baby boy who would turn into the ultimate hot topic wet spot, Alucard. However, the church found out the advanced medicinal practices Lisa was offering due to Matthias's alchemy. They kidnapped her and crucified her. So Matthias said, My name is Dracula now and I hate humans and God is still a butthead. This was the beginning of who we know as Dracula told retrospectively in Castlevania Symphony of the night, and it happens right before Trevor Belmont's story in the timeline. Historically speaking, Castlevania is a game about a man with a chest
desk the size of the front of a Volkswagen cruiser bus, whipping Dracula up like the cover of one of those weird sexy books my grandma reads all the time. Dracula shows up, Belmonts come out, they do the fighting, and evil is vanquished. But is it actually vanquished? And is the evil Simon fought way back when actually the true evil? Well, no. Not really. Dracula is not really the bad guy here. It's the church. <gasps> Don't worry, people. I'm not exactly riding the Dawkins train all the way to Canada. We're talking about Castlevania right now. It's fictional. Anyway, the church was at the root and the continuation of all these problems. They raised up Leon and Matthias to be warriors in the name of God, and then abandoned them at critical points in their lives, when they believed all hope was lost. The reason Leon had to lay down his rights and honor was because the Catholic Church was too busy hunting heretics, which is what they used to call Muslims back then, to care about their own knights. The church abandoned Matthias to his despair after the passing of his wife. The church exiled and turned on the Belmonts when Leon was victorious. And then, 400 years later, because of their hatred and lust for power, they crucified Matthias's sweet baby mama, pushing him over the edge and creating Dracula Vlad Tepes. His hate for God was everlasting, but after the Holy Rollers permanently put Lisa in a T-pose, Dracula's hate for humanity was just as violent. To add insult to injury, the church then turned to the family they scorned, a demon, a witch, and a half-vampire, to fix their problems. People and the creatures they had taught the masses to fear and hate were used to benefit the church's own goals, in not only blatant clerical hypocrisy, but after crucifying Dracula's honey peep for practicing medicine, it's kind of just insulting. The Belmonts themselves are constantly at odds with the church despite having saved the day literally every time the occasion calls for it. Why? Because the church hates and fears the Belmonts. Because the Belmonts have a power they can never possess. A power created by true sacrifice. The Whip was the true evil's bane, created by a completely selfless act of love and compassion. Killing one's true love to do what must be done must no doubt be a difficult thing. An act that Jesus Christ himself, being the sacrificing man that he is, would give a thumbs up to. And so when Leon killed his love Sarah to imbue the whip with her soul, he and Sarah lived out the sacrifice the church was supposed to represent. Yet, at this time, the church ruled with an iron fist, and despite having more power than any kingdom, were willing to sacrifice nothing to thwart the evil they created. They feared losing any power at all, so they treated the true saviors as pawns and took all the credit for themselves. But the Belmonts had the whip, a whip created by sacrifice, and the whip only worked for the Belmonts, and our introduction to them was Simon. The story of Simon Belmont is the story of a curse placed on a family by the church. A curse steeped in tragedy, sorrow, and death over hundreds of years. By caring more about power and authority than it did its own masses, it created an everlasting hatred. That hatred is Dracula, a blight on the land entirely brought to be by the actions and inactions of the clergy. A creature who rises every hundred years to get his vengeance on the world. And who gets the blame? Who has to clean up the mess? The Belmonts. Simon Belmont, because of the church's own cardinal sins, jealousy of the Belmont power, hatred of the Belmont strength, they are too greedy and proud to admit their faults. So the fight goes on. Dracula must be cold. But the real enemy lurks in the background, always pulling the strings and getting in the way. Simon was the first in our hearts. The first man we piloted through the absolute flaming hot Cheetos place that is Dracula's castle. The beginning, but also middle chapter in a very convoluted story about what it's like to be controlled by a theocracy with an iron fist. What it means to be a slave to a system you were taught to love and admire. To strive for meaningless glory against an enemy as hopeless and hurt as you are. And to be a straight-up Conan-looking badass with whip skills that put Indiana Jones to shame. That's the story of Simon Belmont. The story you never knew.
And that's my take on Simon Belmont and Castlevania. Let me know down below what you think. Hopefully it didn't feel like I was taking shots at anyone's religion. I just felt it was pretty undeniable that the church was being super not cool in this franchise, and uh, I, I wanted to point that out. Anywho, if you liked this video, I'd recommend subscribing and hitting that bell so you get notified as soon as we post a video. And click here to check out Streamsicle. We play games, talk about life, and it's a good time. That's all I've got for today. I'm Grant, and I'll see you all later. Bye!